Hand-drawn titles are often the single easiest way to add unique and exciting titles to your videos with little to no knowledge of motion graphics, on condition that you can draw, of course. There are many ways to do this. All of them pretty much share the same principles that I'm gonna be laying out in this video. And the tools and methods that we're gonna be covering will help you with any hand-drawn animations and graphics that you wanna overlay as well. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly get an illustration animated, whether it's through a time-lapse illustration while you're drawing, or just a very basic animation on an animation timeline you can add that particular file to your video editing project. What these are used for are up to your imagination. Titles for sections of your videos, story time style illustrations, lower thirds or little pop-ups throughout your video to just give it life. All the graphics that you're gonna see in this video, I made hand-drawn. Towards the end, I'm gonna show you some examples of videos that I've made in the past. What you'll need to start is any form of illustration hardware, like a Wacom tablet or a notebook with a stylus. Also, illustration software that supports recording. In this video, we're gonna be using Critter 5, which is a free and powerful illustration software that you can download absolutely for free, and I'll include the link in the description below. You can also use something like Fresco, which has more powerful animation tools, but unfortunately, that costs some money. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be using the free stuff just so that you can get you started. And if you want to, you know, pay for something and you've got the money to spend, go for it. On that note, let's pay the bills. Hey, did you know that MSI has designed a series of notebooks just for us content creators? And they're incredible notebooks. In this video, we're using the MSI Creator Z16, which is one of MSI's flagship Creator Series laptops. This video is sponsored by MSI, and MSI have loaned us the Creator Z16 to make this video. The Z16 has an Intel i9 with eight cores, allowing you to multitask and run multiple applications with ease. It's powered by NVIDIA Studios and has a GeForce RTX 30 series GPU, allowing you to take advantage of AI accelerated content creation tools across your favorite creative apps. It's got a golden ratio display, which is 16 by 10, just for creators. You get 11% more room than a typical 16 by nine display to squeeze in those extra features and smaller panels in one screen. The touch screen allows for intuitive interactions with your favorite apps like drawing, illustrating, editing, and note taking, especially with the MSI pen that's included with the notebook. It's got true pixel 2560 by 1600 QHD plus resolution that is factory calibrated to Delta E, which gives you incredible out of the box color accuracy. Basically, you're looking at the colors the way that they actually are. You don't need an SD card reader or hub because it's got one in it. It's also got military grade durability, so you can take it anywhere and you don't have to worry about something happening to your main content machine. Thanks MSI. If you folks wanna see more about the Creator Series, check the description of this video. The first thing that you're gonna to need to do is head on over to critter.org to download your copy of Critter 5. Once it's downloaded and installed, make sure that you've turned on the record Order Docker. Thankfully in Creta 5, they've included this feature, but many illustration apps have it, including Procreate and Fresco. But if your software doesn't support recording, you can consider using GeForce Experience or AMD's Radeon software to record your screen, just your window screen. Just know that making those recordings usable is a little bit more time consuming and requires you to consider how you draw to be presentable because whatever you're gonna see on your screen is what you're gonna get recorded. In the case of Critter's recording, it records a time-lapse of your canvas with second intervals that you can set and doesn't include any on-screen UI or pen curses, which makes it look better in the edits. This makes it way easier to record as you draw. The second way in Krita is a little bit more complicated, but extremely cool. If you go to settings, dockers, and select animation timeline, an animation timeline pops up at the bottom window. This allows you to create proper animations and export them as GIFs with transparent backgrounds, which are easier to add to, you know, software like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or any video editing software that you're using. I'll talk about how to use this after we've covered the time-lapse because I think the time-lapse is a little bit more approachable. A little note here, I'm struggling to find a way to record a time-lapse in Creta 5 with an alpha channel, which just means that there's a transparency layer so that you can see the footage underneath it, which is what you want for motion graphics. Although you can record in WebM and PNG, uh, PMG sequence, those usually have transparent layers. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but hopefully this is something they're gonna be adding at a later stage. But there is a cheeky workaround, which I'm gonna get into later, but it's not ideal and you'll see why when you start editing. Firstly, create a new project that's the same aspect ratio as the video that you've just filmed so that it's the same resolution as the project that you're adding the illustration to. That way, you know firstly where it's going in your shot and secondly, that it won't be pixelated or look terrible or low resolution. 
Before you start drawing, make sure that you've chosen the correct parameters for your time lapse, including the capture interval and frame rate. This should be the same as your video's project file, then you can press the record button. Now you can illustrate your title, your lower third, or scene that you want to include in your video. Once you're done recording, now's the time to export. Hit stop in the recorder docker, then press export. You'll be bombarded with a bunch of export options, but because we're not exporting with a transparent layer, select MP4 for now and, and then choose your export location where you want it to go on your computer. My export location is Bali, no, no, on the computer. A side note here, if you see an FFmpeg not found error, you'll need to get FFmpeg. I've had it the same problem on two machines, so it's likely first time that you do this, it's also gonna be a problem for you. I'm gonna link a video in the description from another creator who can walk you through the process of installing FFmpeg on your machine. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna assume that it's working for you. And if it isn't, just press pause and go to that video and sort it out. Don't be scared, it's actually simpler than it sounds. Now's the time to add the video to your project timeline. This can be imported or dragged in depending on what kind of software that you're using. Because there's no transparent layer in the footage, like we mentioned earlier, the way to remove the background is with blend modes. Different blend modes achieve different results and blend the footage in whatever's underneath it in the timeline with the parameters of that mode. For instance, darken and lighten will take either the whiter or the blacker parts of the footage and make them transparent. This, of course, has some limitations and works better for monochrome art than colorful art. The other workarounds require you to make the base layer and critter a color that you can key in your video editor, like classic movie green screen, green, green screen, green, or blue, the ones that you see in action movies. And then using an ultra key effect filter or chroma key, select the green or the blue that you've chosen to remove it from your footage. Just remember that whatever color you use in your motion graphics or your art shouldn't be the same as the rest of your video because otherwise that's going to disappear as well. There's that green in your artwork, it's going to go. All right, let's move on to animation. This is the proper deal, but don't be scared, don't be daunted. We're not gonna do a Pixar here. This is gonna be a very accessible version of that. Maybe one day you will do Pixar. You better thank me in the comments. This is the ultimate way of including graphics. Once you've gotten a grasp of how Credit 5 works and the drawing process that I've just shown you how to do, you might want to dig your toes into the animation process. Here you can do really quick animations of bubbles popping up or shaky words on screen. Literally the only limitation is your imagination and your talent. And both of those things can be worked on. So no excuses. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is make sure that the timeline, the animation timeline that you're gonna be editing with is available. All right, so you go to your settings tab, then to dockers, then animation timeline. This will bring up a timeline at the bottom of the app that allows you to draw in individual blocks. The blocks are called keyframes in your overall video. On the top right hand side of this animation timeline is an onion looking icon. It kind of looks like an onion. Clicking on this opens up a very important tool in animation called an onion skin. This allows you to see what's in the frames before and in the frames after what you're currently drawing. This is great for tracing the previous scene, of course, and knowing where it is in frame, but also running back and forth how something is going to move across your screen. Like, how is it going to physically animate? The next most important buttons are in the tab above your timeline. They look like one frame, two frames, and one frame that's crossed out. The first frame button is to add a blank frame on the timeline where your marker is. The second icon, the two frames together, is to add a duplicate frame of the frame that you're currently working on. And lastly, the frame on the end, the one that's crossed out, removes the keyframe that you are currently working on. Like I've mentioned before, typically there are 24 frames in a second, but you can get as creative here as you want. I find looping animations of four frames are great for text on screen, jiggly text. It's time for you to play around now. You'll find the right thing for the purposes of the thing that you're going to animate. Side note, it doesn't also have to be illustration. If you import other images, you can animate collages, you can animate anything that goes onto the canvas and move it around. So again, the world's your oyster, and I'm not gonna spoon feed you. Now's the time to send this baby into whatever video editor or streaming software that you're using like OBS. That's a little hint, by the way, at how exciting the implementations of this go. It's not just about video editing. So click on File, Render Animation. Quick note here, uh, and an important step in the process, so just listen up, and if you weren't focusing, now's the time to focus. You need to decide whether or not you want a transparent background or not before you render your animation. Whatever it looks like currently on the timeline inside Credit 5 is what you're gonna get on the outside once you've exported. So if you want the background removed, make sure that you head on over to the layers dock on the, on the far right hand side and hide the background layer by clicking on the eye icon. 
Then when you head on over to the render window, make sure that you choose either GIF, I'm not gonna call it a GIF, GIF or WebM. WebM is great for programs like OBS that recognize WebM, but many video editors don't like the format. You can download plugins for Premiere Pro and I'm sure there's something for Resolve, but be aware that WebM might not immediately be usable on your particular machine. GIF, on the other hand, is versatile enough to work in video editors, on websites, and in OBS. I recommend, for the sake of these videos and uh, for the sake of your editing process, that uh, you use GIF because of its versatility and its ease of use. Now that you've either got your time lapse or your animation, you can import these into your preferred editing software and get creative. As I mentioned, all the graphics in this video were done in a very similar process. So I hope that you got a bunch of ideas by simply watching everything here in this video. I have done a lot of service work for other content creators using these techniques. I'm gonna show you a little bit of them now. This first video is a video I did for Casper Lee, who is, was a YouTuber, I guess he still is because he has a YouTube channel, where he spoke about his Tourette's and I had to illustrate the scene. So I illustrated time lapses of what he was talking about as overlay to make the whole video more visually compelling. The second one I'm really excited about is a lyric video that I did for Macy Peters. There was a time, I don't know if musicians are still doing this, but they make lyric videos on YouTube where you can see the lyrics and I did the whole thing hand-drawn using the same technique speeding up the, the the video footage and slowing it down according to what she's saying through my illustration I even overlaid it remember I was talking about the blend modes with uh, paper in the background so it looked like it was hand-drawn with crayons and paper again the world literally is up to your creativity I want to reiterate that there are tons of other illustration apps out there that you could use and that you can work with, but Critter 5 is free and the most accessible. But the techniques that I've been explaining in this video are principally exactly the same. So just work out how they function inside the illustration software of your choice. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking it. I really appreciate it. And I got a ton of other videos like this on the channel as well that just help content creators content creating. So have fun creating your content. Cheers.